All right, thank you uh, so much for joining us. I'm really excited today to be joined by artists that are part of the group show Appearances curated by Lauren Peters here at the Delaware Contemporary. This is a group exhibition of 16 different artists that responded to one of Lauren's um, paintings from 2016, a self-portrait that she did. And the show highlights a bunch of different local artists and different medium and concepts in the work. Um, so today we're jo joined by Joe Latrufo and uh, Chloe McDowney. Uh, Chloe, you want to tell us a little bit about your work and your uh, experience with the exhibition? Yeah, so hi, um, my name is Chloe McEldowney. Um, a little bit about me, I'm an artist living and working in Wilmington. Um, I moved here about three years ago from Ohio, from the Midwest. Um, so it's been a great experience being here in Wilmington and just the vibrant arts community has been amazing so far. Um, and I have a piece in the exhibition appearances. Um, Lauren reached out to me and I was super excited because my work is very figurative. I work mostly in portraiture. Um, and so I was super excited that she gave me, you know, the resource uh, image and her work and kind of told us like, go off of this and go in your own style. Um, and so I knew that I wanted to stay true to the subject matter in regard to representation. Um, similarly in my work, but I kind of took it in this direction that I immediately thought of these kind of like middle school memories of the first experiences I had of like dressing up and kind of finding this like experimenting with self identity um, and expressing yourself. Um, so I went in that direction and um, really wanted to capture this excitement of like freely playing with makeup and fashion um, but still a little bit of this um, insecurity. And so my piece is titled Cucumber Melon, mm -hmm. which is brings me back to the early 2000s, like every um, like Bath and Body Works and like every product for teen girls had like cucumber melon scent. And so it was like immediately my thought. Um, and so I went in that direction and the painting is done in oil on panel. Um, and although I stuck to representation, like there are these moments of detail, um, these moments of clarity, especially like in the hair, in the glasses, um, but the piece starts to disintegrate a bit around the edges, um, kind of when it gets further from that clarity. And I wanted to kind of portray this, that this is just a memory and it's a memory of kind of an emotion and a feeling. So it, it fades and it, um, sometimes it's stronger than, you know, other points in my life. But um, so yeah, that's, I guess that's a, a summary kind of, of my piece and the direction that I went with this show. Um, that's so interesting because I was talking with Lauren this morning about the show and about the concept of portraiture. And um, when I look at her work, I get this, um, this kind of emotive response where I feel like she's placing herself as the subject um, in a time and space, but it's all really vague. There's not a, a, a really um, salient uh, setting for the work. And so to me, it kind of draws me back in time into an emotional or a memory kind of state. And I love that you referenced that particularly with the, um, the sense memory too, that can be so strongly associated uh, with a space and a time. Um, what was it like for you? Because this morning I just learned that you, that all of the artists were supplied her source photo. So the actual photo that she based her painting on and an image of the painting. I thought at first that all of the artists were just mm -hmm. from an image of her painting. So it was really interesting to me to hear that you also had the source photo. What was that process like for you? Because I, I feel like a lot of your work is portrait based as well. Um, and so maybe what, how was the process for this similar to the way you usually work or, you know, was it a departure? Yeah, um, and it was really cool just as an artist. Yeah, someone who does a lot of portrait work. It was cool to see what like Lauren's process, like what she starts with and kind of then how her mind turns that into a painting. 
um, because I make you know similar choices, but also very different choices in my work. And so it was really cool to see those kind of next to each other um, because I had only seen her finished paintings at that point. Um, and then with my work, I, I used both of hers, but then took, ended up taking kind of some images of myself to work from for my painting and really wanted to draw from her uh, sense of color and composition and kind of like her lighting in her original um, reference photo. Did you get your own pink wig or? Uh, I did didn't, I kind of made it up as I went. Um, I looked though, but with um, COVID and the pandemic, I wasn't able to get one, but. <laughs> it's so interesting to see in the exhib exhibition, all of the different um, types of interpretations of the original source piece. And I feel like you're an artist who's working with portraiture and also painting. Um, so it, it was, it's great to see your work side by side with Lauren's because it got some commonalities, but then also just the treatment and um, the artist's hand is very different, both in really beautiful and expressive ways. Um, Joe, I was going to toss it to you because you are working in a completely different medium. And I'd be interested to hear yeah. about your experience with the source images and then your interpretation and what you wound up making for the show. Well, yeah, I actually photographed the source image and I've done a lot of different photography for Lauren over the years. I photographed her first portfolio. I, photo I used her as a subject in an ad campaign and I actually photographed her wedding. So lots of different ways of interacting with someone. So when she approached me with this, first of all, I was incredibly honored knowing so many of the artists and being so blown away by the level of quality that she was putting me in with. Uh, including your work, Chloe. I've seen your piece, and it's it's very very amazing and evocative. Uh, I like I like what Thank it makes you. me feel. So you know, I've always looked. I've I've so I've followed Lauren's work for a long period of time, and I've always looked at it as um, possibilities, the possibilities of who a person can be. Um, so when I was brought into this in terms of interpreting it, the first thing I did. Was I actually wanted? I wanted a physical. I wanted a physical piece of the original artwork, but obviously I wasn't going to take her painting and run around with it. So I actually made a reproduction of it. I printed it to the same size and I made it in as much as close as possible the same look and feel. I mean, it really looks like the same exact image. Um, but then I wanted to tell a story, kind of how Lauren has told stories, but instead of approaching it as possibilities. I thought it would be interesting to take her younger self, to take her, I was thinking 10 year old self and have her looking at this image as a potential future. The idea of artwork as an artist stepping into something that is your future. So I, I, ended, up, I ended up finding someone in the town I live in, I live in Arden and I found, she's a 12 year old named Noah Yonk I put, I got the wig and put her on her and we basically ran around the forest with the painting and tried to find different stories to find something that might feel right, that might match with Lauren and the person that I know, but more to get, give the essence of someone, someone her age sort of coming into her future and, you know, stepping, that first step into adulthood where you're actually making those decisions and to see what, to see what what would come from that. So we, we did, a, you know, it was about a year ago, it was almost a year ago today that we did that shoot. We did it in the forest at sunset and we just did simple things. And then we went into more and more ridiculous things because I thought the idea of taking this painting that everyone has seen and throwing it up in the air 20 feet and putting it in a creek and letting it float down the river as Noah was running along and jumping across the rocks like a child would do, um, would be something that would be interesting to people, something that would be different. And I mean, that's how I approach my photography. I, I ask for what's interesting and I try to figure out what the story is that's being told or then what story I can tell from it. And that's, that's really my approach to this. I think that so. does really come through in the work. It has a very, um, at least for me, a playful and nostalgic kind of feeling because I do remember 
running around in a creek or you know you know steeping rocks and collecting things in the woods little twigs and sticks and things like treasures that you find on a on a nature walk and so I feel like that energy at least for me with that experience really does come through um in the photo um and it was interesting to hear about the process too uh how you how you achieved yeah. it um and our seasonal theme right now is object. And I think it's really interesting to think of each of your pieces in the context of that theme, because I feel like, um, Chloe, you've got this portrait, which is kind of a traditional art object. And Joe, you took the portrait as an object and really made it physical and put it in into a story in a place. Do either of you want to talk a little bit about uh, how you think your work fits in with that seasonal theme? Maybe Joe, I'll toss it to um, you. Yeah, I can. Um... Sure, I, absolutely. I mean, I think I think for me, when I was trying to interpret the work, like I said before, the, I needed some kind of physicality of it. I needed, in order to tell a story, I had to I had to make a statement that this was a piece of art that we were reacting to in some way. Um, and in a lot of ways, I then had a lot of freedom to be playful with it, to let Noah decide, you know, if, if she would, if that was her future, what would she do with this piece? How would she approach it? Um, and, you know, she might, she might, one of the things she says is, you know, I might be the art thief. I might just take it and run. Um, so we did that. We, I, there are actually images that weren't in the piece where she's, slow shutter speed for me running through the forest. And the only thing that's in focus is the artwork. So I'm panning with, I'm panning with the, the artwork itself and get, giving that sense of motion and energy to the image. So for me, for me, the idea of it as an object is critical for how I interpreted it. And in fact, it wasn't until I got to that place that it made any sense where I was gonna go because when Lauren first approached me, I'm like, I, I'm excited about this because I have no idea how to approach this. So that's where I went with it. That's awesome. And I think that at least for me, objects can be really connected to memory and the idea of an art object uh, having a story and a narrative and a history that it's telling that kind of transports you. Chloe, sorry, I think we had a little blip in the connection. I want to toss it to you too. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, and Joe, I love that so much that I just, your whole process and idea behind it is just absolutely brilliant. Um, I love that. Um, oh, object. In regard to my work, especially, like I said, since I'm working mostly figurative and portraiture, I, I frequently think of object in connection um, with a person, like with the subject, which a lot of Lauren's work also does as well, you know, using like wigs or in my piece, like the decision to have kind of the big glasses. Um, and so really like what objects mean as memory, as um, in relation to people, like how you are perceived. Um, yeah, that's kind of how my work deals with that. Well, I think accessories too, in a in a portrait, particularly all of those really important, uh, what seem minor but very uh, telling artistic choices that you make that can all tell about um, the history of the subject, the story of the subject, or their identity. Um, and I know identity is a big part of uh, Lauren's work um, and mm -hmm. you know, the theme of the exhibition. Did either of you have any? like surprises or stumbling blocks along the way or maybe some breakthroughs and aha moments in your process when you were um, thinking about the group show and your way of working? I mean, really the only thing that I had ch a challenge with that was more difficult than the photography was getting the actual object right. When I got, I went through a series of prints and it was the wrong type of paper based on the image then I had it measured wrong. So I went through many iterations of getting it right. And then to get it perfectly glued to the wood to match what she had and flat so that I wasn't Photoshopping it to get it right the whole time it took me a long time to get to get right. It was very frustrating and very challenging, but also in a cool way, you know, for me, I'm, I'm mostly digital. So to have something that I'm sitting, I'm literally sitting in my studio and gluing and fastening and, and being physical with, 
was very different for me and very welcome. So that that was another thing that, you know, this living in, in 2021 where everything has kind of become virtual, to again be able to, to touch something that I'm trying to create is a is a great feeling that I'm that I'm sure Chloe can relate to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um yeah, for me, the biggest stumbling block was actually the orange color of the background that Lauren used, she has it in hers and it works so well in her work. And I, something that I do in my process, I take lots of progress photos of paintings as I work. So I like to be able, when something's done, to kind of see this evolution of the choices that I made, things, how things have changed. Um, and I probably had maybe four or five different versions of that orange background that I was trying to get work to work and I could not get it to work and finally came to a resolution by having just bits of the orange kind of popping out mm -hmm. um but yeah it works so well in Lauren's piece and I just I could not get it <laughs> I think the solution that you came to was really great though because I feel like it is in keeping with your kind of hand and um, you know I can kind of recognize mm -hmm. your work uh, there's a style to it that I think um, you know it you stayed really true to that uh, and I think that's one of the other really remarkable things about the show is everybody you can tell that they were working from the same source images and each piece in that exhibition looks great next to Lauren's piece or, you know, referencing the original piece, but each of the artists also really stayed true, I think, to their way of working um, in the final mm -hmm. pieces. Um, so what, what do each of you have coming up next? Chloe, I see a lot of work behind you. I know I've seen your work in a lot of different places around Wilmington and online. What do you have um, coming up? So I have an exhibition coming up right now. I'm kind of just painting like crazy. Um, I have an exhibition coming up that opens in May at Peninsula Gallery in Lewis, Delaware. Um, it is called I Am Woman and it is female artists who are painting uh, the female form. And so I'll have quite a few pieces in that exhibition. Um, and then I have some work online through 33 Contemporary Gallery and PXP Contemporary Gallery right now. Um, but yeah. Awesome, congratulations. Sounds like you've been really productive painting um, over the last couple of months. Everybody's been making, I think like crazy. Um, Joe, what else do you have going on? I always have a lot of different type of things going on. I'm not really a specific type of photographer. So I actually just, take on interesting projects, whether they be architectural, portraiture, even product photography sometimes. Um, so a lot of really, a lot of what I'm really hoping to do is get back into some of the things that had started up about this time last year before COVID hit that were very exciting for me. I do a lot of magazine work. Um, I just kind of signed a Reuters gig, um, just gotten started with that when, when everything hits. So we're starting to get back into it now and that's, that's very interesting work. Um, but that type of thing, I'm doing a lot of work with, I always do a lot of work with the local magazines as well, Delaware Today, Out and About. Delaware Today has got me on a very interesting project, kind of following the Underground Railroad um, from Maryland all through Delaware and then up into PA that I'm really interested about. We're gonna be doing that next week. Um, and exhibit wise, I don't have anything really scheduled yet. I'm about to schedule something at a place called Longview, Texas, just outside of Fort Worth. And I had, helped organize a bunch of um, Black Lives Matter murals and paintings on the boarded up places, buildings in Wilmington, um, you know, in, in the summertime. And what I did with that was I was, as the painters were working, I was photographing them and talking with them and he get, hearing their stories, getting to know them, but really trying to capture visually the pro their process and their emotions and their thoughts as they were painting. Um, and so a lot of those images and then the originals are gonna actually end up getting shipped out to Texas where there's gonna be a big, big exhibit of, of it out there. They were looking for something like this. Um, and so my, so my process shots as well as the actual, in some cases, very massive images um, are being basically processed in order and then flown out that, flown out that way for that, 
for that exhibit. And that's um, that's a project I did, you know, I did um, with Jonathan Whitney and Eliza Jarvis here in town, um, just because we wanted, we were, we were there the day after we were cleaning up after the riots and we were, the three of us were just like, we have to find some way of doing something that makes, makes this make sense to us. Um, and I think that is a great resource for art. You know, when you bring art into something, it helps act as a mirror um, very often in a good way. And sometimes not in a not so good way that helps you see things. So in doing that, you know, that it, it really was a, a wonderful surprise how it turned out. I made some great relationships from it, met some amazing people and artists in particular. Um, and then this ended up all over the world, all over the country, at least. Um, the AP picked it up, all, all these images and all the stories were Washington Post all the way out to the West Coast. And this was not the intention. The intention was to just have something beautiful up that when people saw it on border up walls, saw art and didn't see the, you know, the negative aspects of what happened. And the reality was it showed both. And that was, that was a very cool part of it. So that's, that's what's coming up. That's awesome. Congratulations to both of you. And I'm so thankful that we took the time to chat a little bit today. I hope that people will have a chance to come check out the exhibition. It's here at the Delaware Contemporary um, through the end of April. And, you know, Joe and Chloe and all of the artists that we get a chance to work with here, I think you really do tap into how art is a vehicle for processing and making and understanding and that you know it doesn't matter if you're an artist or a viewer or what kind of art that you're making but you can um you can really experience the transformative qualities and and the transformative power of art and i think that that's something that's um really inspiring so thank you all for being a part of uh this amazing exhibition and for all the wonderful work that you're doing